Good evening, guys. How are you? Fine, fine. fine how are you, sir? All right. How was the mathematics? It was okay. Yeah, mathematics is actually the easiest course in first year, I think. Right? Right. Yes. Yeah, like as long as you just practice, practice. That's all you have to do, just practice. Yeah, so what topic were you doing in mathematics? Quadratic functions. Oh, okay. Quadratic functions. You've already done um, complex numbers. Yes, you've done that. Uh, what about uh, what? Is trigonometry? We've done trigonometry. Yes. Oh, you guys have done a lot. You're on calculus now. Yes. Oh, the differentiation or integration? Or is it this does? Oh, so you guys almost done then with everything, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we are almost done. Oh, okay. And how are this one? Do you got your results? Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? <laughs> it's that learning, sir. Huh? Okay, so I don't know. Wait for others to join, or this is how you guys are. Huh? Let's wait for people. Give them two minutes, sir. Two minutes, okay. Uh, how come it seems people what I hear today are new? Okay, I see Alida. Alida was here yesterday. It was also Beetle Boy. I don't know if Beetle Boy was also here. Now, where have you gone? Sorry, oh, you can't see me. I can see you now. Oh, all right. No, don't worry, I'm around. Okay, so I don't know. Can we start now? Yes, we yes, can sir. start, sir. We are about 60. We can start. Oh, we're about, we're about 60. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, so today we're doing um, atomic structure and uh, chemical bonding. You've done that topic before, right? Those two topics. Yes, we have. You have, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So we can start with uh, atomic structure. Uh, so we're going to basically talk about the structure of an atom. And then from there, we're also going to uh, look at electronic uh, configuration, how to write electronic configurations of different elements. So that one, electronic configuration, always comes. And it's a very important topic. It's a build up also to when you start doing the, the quantum mechanics and all those things. So it's better you know it. It's very important also for electrochemistry. So it's a foundation. So you need to know the basics, like how to write electronic configurations of different elements. So that's what we're going to look at. And from here, we're now going to look at um, chemical bonding after we're done with atomic structure. Hopefully, if time allows, we'll talk about the different types of bonds, uh, the covalent bonds and non-covalent bonds and the different types and what is involved in each one of them. So that's how our lesson today is going to be structured. Yeah, so we can now start our atomic structure. So maybe just a quick revision. What did we say an atom was? There was one who gave us a very good definition. So that is the right? Yeah. Yes, please repeat your definition. Uh, Alida, repeat your definition of an atom. An atom is as much as an 
an atom is the smallest indivisible neutral particle that takes part in a chemical. All right, great. Yeah, so basically that's what an atom is. So we said an atom has got uh, uh, protons, it's got neutrons, and it's also got electrons. So we said the protons are positively charged, the electrons are negatively charged, and the neutrons are neutral. Yeah, so then we also say that uh, for us to calculate the atomic number or the mass number, so we say the mass number is equal to Z plus N, Z being the proton number, and then N being the neutron number. Yeah, so let's now go into the structure of an atom. So firstly, one thing that we need to understand is that all these have got, uh, are constituted in an atom. We've got the protons, we've got the neutrons, and we've also got the electrons. So an atom has got a nucleus, firstly, and the nucleus is that central part in an atom. So what is found in the nucleus of an atom? Can anyone tell us? Protons and neutrons. Protons and neutrons. Yeah, so in the nucleus of an atom, so the nucleus is like the heart. It's like in the middle. So in the nucleus of the atom, that's where we find the protons, and that's where we also find the, the neutrons. And where are the electrons? In the shell. In the shell, okay, different. Another answer. All right, so the, the electrons. Orbitals. Yeah, so the shells is also correct, and the orbit, but the orbitals is the most correct answer. And uh, I'll get to why we're saying the orbitals is the, uh, the most correct answer. So I've tried to draw basically a, what I'm trying to talk about, the nucleus, as well as where the electrons are. So let me just uh, take uh, like a peek so that you guys can see what I've drawn. That's okay, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I don't know how, how good my camera is, but like, uh, are you guys able to see that? Mm -hmm. So at least, yes, sir. Yes. So here, that's why we have the, the nucleus. So this part that I'm shading, this is the nucleus, and that's why we find the protons, and that's why we find the neutrons. And then around here, in these energy levels, that's why we find the electrons. So you know that electrons are negatively charged, right? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, let me try to clean my camera a bit. Yeah, so the electrons are negatively charged. That we all know. So, and the protons we said are positively charged, right? Yes. Yeah, so if the yeah. protons so if are positive. Can be highlight yourself so that you don't get this, your screen doesn't get disturbed when when someone is speaking. Oh, I do, I do what, sorry? You highlight yourself. I highlight myself. And how do I do that? You go on participants, check there. Okay, let me check. Mm -hmm participants and then I then I do what I, I raise my hand or something so we can continue if it's fading it's okay okay yeah so was able to see that right so the electrons are negatively charged and then the protons are positively charged so we know that uh, opposite sorry attracts, sir, the right? pop-ups are kind of uh... Uh, disturbing us because we can't see every time when someone joins it's showing their profile or anything like that so it's... oh okay I, but i don't know i'm not the host the host is uh campus classes i don't know who's hosting the problem is that people are taking time to mute their mics yeah people are i think are taking time to to mute their mics yeah so I don't know, maybe the host could help because I'm not the, the host of the meeting. So it's kind of hard. Then tell the host to highlight you so that your screen doesn't get disturbed. Yeah, but I don't even know who the host is. Just written campus classes. Who's, okay, let me try to text him. 
Let's continue. Time. All right. Just continue. Yeah, Let's continue. Just an hour. We can continue like that. All right. Yeah, so the electrons are negatively charged and then the protons are positively charged. So we you all know that opposites will attract, right? Opposite charges will attract and then like charges will repel. We know that from grade 12, right? Yeah, so there are forces. So because the electrons are negatively charged and the protons are positively charged, there are forces that will push the electrons towards the protons. And so because there are those forces that have to push the electrons towards the, 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 the positively charged protons, we also need other forces that will pull away the electrons so that the electrons don't get attached to the protons, so that the electrons continue circulating around their orbit. So in short, we basically, in basic terms, we need energy to keep the electrons revolving around their orbit, which is this orbit that's around here. So that energy increases the further you go away from the nucleus. So as you go further from the nucleus, that energy that is needed to keep the electrons in their orbit increases. So away from the nucleus, the energy levels increase. We got that right? Yes. Yeah. So the energy levels, yes. the energy levels, we can denote them with the letter N. So the energy levels, I said they increase as you move away from the nucleus. So the first energy level we can say N is equals to one. The second energy level we can say N is equals to two. And the third energy level we can say N is equals to three. So this N denotes the number of energy levels. So each energy level has got a maximum number of electrons that it can accommodate. Uh, I'm sure we all know that, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. So the formula for finding the number, the maximum number of electrons that each energy level can accommodate is 2n squared. So this is the formula for calculating the number of electrons that each energy level can accommodate. Of course, the n is representing the energy level. So for example, if we take the first energy level, we say n is equal to 1, it's going to be 2, 1 to the power 2. 1 squared is 1. One times two is two. So meaning the first energy level can only accommodate a maximum of two electrons. The same thing, the second energy level, when we say n is equals to two there, when we say n is equals to two there, it will be two squared. Two squared is four. Four times two is eight. So the second energy level can accommodate a maximum number of eight electrons. The same thing, if we put a three there, we say three to the power two is nine. Nine times two is 18. So the third energy level can accommodate a maximum number of 18 electrons. So this is basically the structure of an atom. So I said, these that are around the nucleus are energy levels. Now within these energy levels, we have also got what we call sub levels. So sub levels are found within these energy levels. So just within a minute, I'll, I'll explain what I mean by the sub levels. And then within the sublevels, that's where we now find the orbitals. And within these orbitals, that's where we now find the electrons. And that's why the question that I'd asked was, where exactly do we find electrons? So specifically, the electrons are found within the orbitals. That's the specific location of the electrons. Someone said shells. Yes, shells. Also, shells are not really the ultimate uh, place where electrons are found. It's more like saying electrons are found in the energy levels. Yes, it's true, but specifically, they are found in the orbitals. Yeah, so now let me go on to explain what I mean by the energy levels. So the energy levels, we say, we said we had the first energy level, the second energy level, we had the third energy level, and then we can also have the fourth energy level, and so on. So now within these energy levels, we have what we call sublevels. So sublevels are denoted by letters. So sublevels are denoted by letters S, P, D, and F. So these letters are what denote the sublevels. And these sublevels are found within the energy levels. So for example, the first energy level only has one sublevel, which is S. 
The second energy level has got two sub-levels, which is S and P. The third energy level has three sub-levels, which are S, P, and D. The fourth energy level has got four sub-levels, which are S, P, D, and F. So always remember it. It's more like uh, maybe a four-story building. The first level only has one room. The second level has two rooms. The third level has three rooms. The fourth level has got four rooms. So I'm sure you'll be able to remember it. The energy level is equal to the sub-level. So the energy level, the first energy level can only have one sub-level. The second has two sub-levels. The third has three sub-levels and just like that. So these are the sub-levels. So now each of these sub-levels has got orbitals, right? So each of these sub-levels has got orbitals. So for example, the first sub-level, which is S, only has one orbital. And the orbitals, they go according to odd numbers. So the first sub-level, which is S, has got one orbital. The second sub-level, which is S and P, have got three orbitals. The third sub-levels, which are S, P, and D, has got five. I said they are odd numbers. And the four sub-levels, which are S, P, D, and F, have got seven orbitals. So now within these orbitals, that's where we find the electrons. Now of note also is that each orbital can only have a maximum number of two electrons. Each orbital can have only two electrons. That's the maximum number. So this is something that you want to know. So know the energy levels. N is equals to one, N is equals to two, N is equals to three and four. And then also know the sublevels. Know that each energy level may have different sublevels. The first energy level only has one sublevel, and these sublevels are, sub are denoted by letters. There's letter S, there's letter P, letter D, and letter F. So that's how we denote these uh, sublevels. And these sublevels will really help us when it comes to uh, writing the electronic configurations of different, different elements. So as I said, this is a sub-level. So this is an energy level. For example, I can say this is an energy level. N is equals to one. So within, if this is the first uh, energy level, the second, the sub-level, for example, this is N is equals to, okay, let me say this is N is equals to two. So we know that N is equals to two has got sub-levels. So in, within this N is equals to two, there are two sub-levels, which is S, and P. So we can write S and P like that. And then this is N is equals to two. And then within these sublevels, there are orbitals. So we said the S orbital, the S sublevel can only have one orbital. So the S sublevel can only have one orbital like that. And then the P sublevel can have three orbitals. So you can write three orbitals like that. So I'm sure you're able to see where the orbitals are, right? Yeah, so now within these orbitals, that's where we find the electrons. So each orbital can only have a maximum number of two electrons. Each orbital can only have a maximum number of two electrons like that. So this will be important when we come to now talk about the electronic configuration, which is now what I'm going to go to. So when we now talk about the electronic configuration, remember I said we have uh, one S and then we also have two S and two P, the second uh, uh, sub-level which had S and P. So this, remember, don't get confused. So this is N is equals to one, and then this is N is equals to two, and this is N is equals to three. So n is equals to three, we said it has three s, it has three p, and it has three d. So it has got three sublevels. And then the other one, which was n is equals to four, we said it has got four sublevels. So we said it has got four s, it has got four p, it has got four d, and it has got four f. So it has four sublevels. The same thing also, N is equals to five. It has five S, 
5P, 5D, 5F, and 5G. So I'm sure we've seen that, right? So we can't see your camera is not focused anymore. Oh, my camera is blurry, sorry. Yeah, sorry, my camera is really, really, really bad. Let me try to clean it a bit. We can see. Oh, you can see now, right? Yeah, so don't pay attention to what's on top. So I said this is uh, the first energy level, which is N is equal to one. And we said the first energy level has got one sub level, which is S. And then this is the second energy level, which is N is equal to two. So it has two so sub levels. Camera. So then your camera. Oh, you can't see. We can see upside down. Like oh, okay. Okay, so now you can see straight. Yes. Okay. So this yes. is the second energy level. So the second energy level, we said it has got two sub-levels, which are S and P. And then the third energy level has got three sub-levels, which are S, P, and D. The fourth energy level has got four sub-levels, which is S, S, P, D, and F. And then the fifth energy level also has five sub-levels, which are S, P, D, F, and G, like that. So for us to come up now with the actual electronic configurations of each of uh, the elements that we're going to be looking at, we can now draw arrows across the sub-levels. So we can draw an arrow across the... Are you able to see that? It's blurred. It's blurred. It's blurred. Yeah. It's blurred. I think I, I need to buy a new phone now. Yes, when you pay, you should go back. Yes, sir. You, I'm, you can just buy my. It's very bad. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but at some point. Try to wipe it there. Wipe the camera, maybe. No, I've tried to wipe it, but I don't know. No, it's, it's, it's not focusing. It's not focusing. You are too close not... to the book. Try. But I think that's the phone. No, okay. Yeah, yeah so after. So Just after wait for draw... the camera to focus. Okay. But it's not focusing even. Let me try to. <laughs> okay, so like this, you're seeing it is upside down. Because there is a little bit of the camera. I guess you are saying Please mute your mic. Chongo. No, no, try to can't see. Hello, mute your mic. Okay, just mute your mics. Those of mic on. I don't want to see I just want to get on. Mute your mic, you will. Just use that one. Okay, let's Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe if, if there was a way of sending these pics, I don't know. Maybe I can send the pics after, right? Yeah, I guess that will help. Uh, yes, you yeah. can proceed. In, in the group. In the group. Yeah, so. Who is think, that one nursing babies in class? Those that have got their mics on. I, I know, just, right? <laughs> <laughs> then just mute your mics. All right, so after we write the, the sub-levels, so I said we can draw an arrow across the first sub-level. We can draw a second arrow, which will just cut across uh, two S. Then the third arrow will cut across two P and three S. The fourth arrow will cut across three P and four S, like that. And the fifth arrow will cut across across 3D, 4P, and 5S, like that. So I'm really I can't see what you're doing. Yeah, and the camera is really, really, really bad. So it's not your camera, it's the network. It's the network? So, oh, yes, because for me, it shows no, your network. Is it's the network plus the camera.
No, it's not even the network, neither the, the camera. It's, it's the light, it's dark light. The light, okay, but the light, okay, let me see. <laughs> I think maybe it's just the camera. Yeah, it's just a camera because the network has not even the camera. It's a one. Why you a Sabbath keeper so that we have a makeup tomorrow in the day? Because we can't afford this. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. No, I'm not. I'm not really. Tomorrow is not even Friday. The suggestion yeah, is that when, he, when class is yeah. done, you send the screenshots to the group, which is okay because we probably need these notes. At the moment, you cannot be taking down the notes, but afterwards, maybe that will help. So for now, let's just listen. But, but it doesn't it's hard to listen without seeing. Without seeing. You can, you can, you can, you can okay, so you can, you can see now, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, sir, we can see. Continue. All right. We can see, All right. sir. So, she is believing. So from now, <laughs> You've understood so far what I was trying to explain, right? You've understood about the energy levels, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so I talked yes, about sir. the energy levels. Then I've talked now about the sub-levels. So these are the sub-levels. So I said the sub-levels are denoted by letters. So there's S, there's P, there's D, and there's F. So as I said, the first energy level only has one sub-level. So one is equal to one. So the first energy level has got one sub-level, which is one S. The second energy level has got two sub-levels. So it's two is equal to two. So the sub-levels are S and P. Then the third energy level has got three sub-levels. N is equal to three. Three is equal to three. So S, P, and D. Then the fourth energy level has got four sub-levels, which are S, P, D, and F. And then the fifth energy level has got five sub-levels, which are five S, five P, five D, 5F and 5G. So that's how I wrote those sublevels. So I said, for you to uh, come up with the electronic configuration, this will actually, you find that it will be actually easier after I do this. So what I did is I, I drew an arrow across the first sublevel, which is this arrow here, which is 1S. I drew a second arrow across the second sublevel, which is right there. And then the third sublevel, I also drew a third arrow. So I'm sure if you look at this third arrow, it will not cut across one uh, sub-level like this one and this one, but it will cut across two sub-levels, across the P and across the three. And then when you, I also drew the fourth arrow. So the fourth arrow, as you will see, will cut across uh, 3P and 4S. And then I also drew the fifth arrow. So the fifth arrow, as you will see, will cut across 3D, 4P, and 5S. So then we can now write these numbers according to how the arrows are cutting across them. So the first one, you can see that the first arrow is cutting across 1S. So we write our 1S there. And then we can see that the second arrow is cutting across the 2S. So we can write our 2S right there. And then the third arrow is cutting across uh, 2P and 3S in that order from 2P and 3S. So we write our 2P and write our 3S there like that. And then the fourth arrow is cutting across 3P and 4S in that order. So we can write our 3P and our 4S in that order. And then the fifth arrow is cutting across 3D, 4P and 5S in that order. So it's cutting across 3D, 4P and 5S in that order. So I'm sure so far that is clear, right? Yes. 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 So now remember, uh, remember what I said, right? I said the sub levels are S, P, D, and F. You guys remember, right? So I said each of these sub levels has got orbitals. So I said these orbitals are there according to odd numbers. So the first sub-level, which is S, only has one orbital. Then the second sub-level, which is P, has got three orbitals. Then the third, which is D, has got five. And the last, which is F, has got seven. 
right? We, we've gotten that, right? Yes. Yes, we have. Yes. yes. So now, <laughs> since we know just what each of those sub-levels, how many orbitals each of those sub-levels uh, sub have, so on top of these numbers, we can write how many orbitals each of them has. So the first one is S. So we said S has got how many orbitals? One. One. So we can write one dash there. The second one also is S. So we said S also has oh, one wow. sub-level. So we write one dash. Then the third one is P. So we said P has got how many sub-levels? Three. Mm. Yeah, three orbitals. So we write three dashes there on top of the P. And then the S got one uh -huh. orbital, then the P has got three, so we write three again. And then the four again is S, so it's got one orbital. Then the D has got how many orbitals? Five. Five. So we write five dashes there, like that. All right, and so on. So that's how you basically write the electronic configuration. So for example, if you're given uh, something like uh, hydrogen, what's the atomic number for hydrogen? One, it's one. The atomic number for hydrogen is one, right? Yeah. Yeah, so meaning if it's, we're told to write the, the electronic configuration for hydrogen, we only put uh, the one, one there, right? You've got any, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. And then after hydrogen, what do we have? Helium, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So helium is two. So meaning it's got two electrons. Two oh, electrons. Yes, so meaning the second electron, if it's helium, it will come on the first one S, except it will be in the opposite direction, right? Yes. Yeah. So who can tell me the name of this principle that was used? Anyone who knows the principle? Hanzu. Sorry? Uh, is the it one Hanzu? for the diagonals. If it, the, if one for the, if for the, the one the one for the orbitals, the one for okay. the orbitals where <laughs> two electrons that are in the same orbit orbital will spin in opposite directions. What is the name of that principle? It's for this exclusion principle. Yeah, so who has, who has answered? Pauli's principle. It's Pauli's, the, Pauli's exclusion principle. Yeah, so it's actually the Pauli's exclusion principle. So that's the principle that applies here. So this is actually showing that the two electrons are spinning in opposite directions. So you write one up there and one down there. So, for example, we can get maybe another element like uh, chlorine. Chlorine is number one in the periodic table. Okay. Chlorine is number one in the periodic table. 17. So, chlorine is number 17, right? Yes. Yeah. So, the electronic configuration. So, we we'll put our two electrons there, which is two. So, this is three. This is four, we've gotten that right. So when filling now this P, yeah. we have to make sure that we fill in, first of all, each one electron in each of these orbitals. So we fill in one there, fill in one there, okay. and fill in another one there. So this, this makes it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then from there, we now start going back. So we can fill in an eighth one there, Fill in a ninth one there, fill in a tenth one there. Right? Sir, I'm kind of lost. Are we talking about one one atom or I mean one element or different types of elements? So here we are uh, talking about chlorine first. We wanted to write the electronic configuration for chlorine, right? So we yes. said chlorine is uh, number 17 on the periodic table. So meaning it's got 17 electrons. So I'm mm -hmm. now starting to fill those 17 electrons in these orbitals that I've put. So I'm, able, I'm sure I'm able to see these orbitals that we're filling, right? So we said each of these, these are orbitals. So this is an orbital, an orbital, an orbital, an orbital, an orbital. So all these two dashes on top are orbitals. You've gotten it, right? Yes. 
And then we said uh, the maximum number of electrons that each orbital can have is two. Mm -hmm. You got that, right? Yeah. Yes. So for chlorine, which are 17, we're filling in 17 electrons. So we start with the first orbital in this order. You saw we came up with the order, right? After crossing yeah. these arrows. Yes. Right? Yeah. So the first orbital, which is this one is, so we fill in one electron, we fill in the second electron, the opposite direction. We move to the mm -hmm. next orbital. We fill in one electron and we fill in the second electron. So in total, we have now got four electrons. Mm -hmm. Then we now move on to the 2P. So the 2P has got three orbitals. So I said, how you fill these orbitals is that first you have to fill one electron in each of the orbitals first. So I filled in one, filled in one, filled in one. Then I now went on to now fill in the other electrons. So I filled in another one there, another one there, and another one there. So in total, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we still have how many electrons left? Seven, right? Yes. Yeah. So we now move on again to the three S. So the three S, we fill in an electron there, which is now the 11. The 12th electron, we fill it again there. So we now have 12 electrons. We're remaining with five. So we move to the P again. So the P again, I said we fill in one each. First. So that's 12. So this is 13, 14, 15, right? Mm, correct. Yes. yes. 15. So the 16th one, we start again. We fill in the 15th one, 15th one there. And the 16th one, we fill it the, there. So this is 15, this is 16, and then the 17th one, we fill it in there, right? You've got how we filled in the electrons, then? Right? The electrons are now 17. So, yeah, 18. 18. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So we remove that one. So they are now 17, right? Sorry? Yes, sir, they're now 17. Yes, they're now 17. So meaning to write now the electronic configuration of chlorine, we write like that first one S. So how many electrons are in S? That two, right? So we write our two there. We come to the two S. How many electrons are in the two S? We have got two electrons in the two S. So we write our two there. We come to the two P. How many electrons are in the two P? There are two, four, there are six electrons in the 2P. So there are six electrons in the 2P like that. Then next we come to the 3S. Sorry, there was no space. So the 3S, how many electrons in the 3S? We've got two electrons. Then we now come to the 3P. How many electrons in the 3P? We've got five electrons in the 3P. So we write our five there. So this now becomes the electronic configuration for chlorine. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p5. When we count these electrons, so we can count 5, 6, 7, 7 plus 3 is 13, 13 plus 2 is 15, 15 plus 2 is 17. So this is how you write the electronic configuration for chlorine. So have you gotten that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, sir. So it's clear, yes, right? So I'm sorry. Sure you've seen how you write the electronic configuration. So, so can someone write for me the electronic configuration for copper? Anyone? I should point now. Last point. Yes, point. Okay. Do you have the periodic table? Sorry? Uh, 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 can you kind of like show us the periodic table? Oh, the periodic yeah. table, I don't have it right now. Let me try to check if I could find something that I can share. Okay, but, but um, I was asking for the, for the, for the atomic number for, for, for copper. Okay, anyone knows the atomic number for copper? Copper is 
number? 29. Yeah, Copa is number 29. Yeah, so, so can someone write the atomic number for Copa? And also someone write the atomic number for Argon. All right, so who's writing for Copa? Any takers? I, I, I think I'll give it a try for copper. Okay, for, for copper. All right, okay. And those writing for argon. What's the atomic number for argon? Argon is 18. Okay. You guys should memorize. At least the first 20 elements, you should memorize them, right? No. <laughs> huh? Yes. <laughs> At least for the for the first 20 elements, you should memorize the actual elements as well as the atomic numbers so that you don't have to go to the periodic table. Then these other ones, you can check them out later on the periodic table. But for the first 20, at least you're expected to know those. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm waiting for one to write for copper and also one to write for argon. For copper is ready, sir. Okay, for copper. Who's sharing one for copper? Uh, can I give it a try? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, one S squared. First for copper. One S two. Yes, one for copper. Yes, one S two. One S two. <clears throat> yes. Two S two. Two S two. Yes. You've written two S two P six. 2p6, yes. 3s2. 3s2. Yes. 3p6. 3p6. Yes. yes. Next. Then, sorry. And what, what did you say again? After three P six? Four S two, sir. Okay, four S two. The next. Three D nine. S two. Three D nine. Yes. All right. So nice try, Let but this try. is not correct. Not correct. Can try argon. Can I try my friend with argon? Actually. Okay, I yeah, try argon. Okay, so we understand the argon. Okay, okay, let's get done with the copper then. This is our no, you can understand it's argon because argon, argon, I think should be easier than the copper. Sir, let me go with the one for copper, please. All right, Sir, go can ahead. I go with the copper? I'm going for okay. argon. Okay, for someone copper. to go for the one for copper. We here. Okay, so for copper, we have mm -hmm. one S two. We have one yes. S two S two two S two yes two P six two P six three S two three S two three P six three P six four S one four S one and three D ten three D ten so again yes. nice try but this is not correct. Can I give it a try? Yes, I want someone to get one for Popa. Okay, it's one S2, two S2, one S2, two S2, two P2, three S2, three P6, three D5. Sorry, go again, go again. One S2, two S2, two P2. Yes. Three, three S2. Uh -huh. 3p3p6 
3p6 uh, not then, then. Yeah. and then what then uh, for 4s uh, is zero so I'll just move it then i'll say 3d5 uh. 3d5 nice try <laughs> but no let me let me also try <laughs> okay try I... try mm -hmm. one is two yes one is two two is two yes two p6 two p6 yes then three is two uh-huh three p6 <laughs> yeah four is one uh-huh. 3D10. <laughs> ah, no. Sorry to be it wasn't, it wasn't true. <laughs> let me try. Can, can, let me try. Let me try. Guys, everyone has failed to yeah. make it correct. Let me try. All right, go so ahead. Can I try as well? Yeah. One is yeah, two. Go ahead. One is mm -hmm. two. Two is two. Two yes. One is two. Two is two. Yes. Two P six, yes. Three S two. Uh huh. Three three P six. Yes. Four S two. Uh huh. Yeah. Three D ten. Ah no 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 no. He has just made a mistake on the four S. I'm supposed to say four S one. Maybe I don't let me try. Yeah. What is it? Mute your mic, yes. Sir, maybe we should first go Sir, with the 3D10 the and then the 4S1. Can so, I try, please? The last try. Sir, so, let me try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I was the first one to ask. I'm, I'm right, waiting. So guys, I'm going. So just give us okay, your answer. Okay, sir, let me, I let think me we will we'll try. We are 82, so yeah. <laughs> we started. Yeah, yeah. So, just give us anyway, the okay, sir, finally. I wanted to, I wanted to just uh, confirm with you guys. Like, I wanted to, the reason why I asked for Copa is because finally, for Copa, there are two exceptions to, there are just two things, there are just two, actually, two elements that are different when it comes to the way that we're writing. So there are two special elements. So there's Copa and there's also Chromium. Have... Right? Mm -hmm. So for copper and chromium, so these are actually special cases. So meaning you guys, I'm now giving you that assignment, go and research, find out the electronic configuration mm -hmm. for copper as well as chromium, right. because these two, these two are the exceptions and you need to know them, so definitely they come. Sir, can I just ask? Can Sir, I just... What, 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 what did you say Check the other answer. element is? Ah, so copper yes. and chromium. So oh, can I ask now? Yes, go ahead and ask. Mm, so I'm I think you should teach one on this one because even at the time we had it, our tutor told us to research and like we couldn't come up with the answer. So please, just help us. I uh, know, guys. You can, yes, sir, can I, I try for copper? <laughs> uh, yes, okay, we can try. Okay, who's that one who's honestly crying for copper? Let me try for copper. Uh, yes. So what about, what if you start with are gone, then you say 3D10 for S1. No, that's still not correct. Okay. So, Copa, those are exceptions. So, you need to I really go. know. Okay. Yes, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. One more person for Copa, one more person okay. for Copa, and one more person for Argon, then we proceed. Okay. So, I have 1S2. Okay. Yes. 2S2. Yes. 2P6. Yes. 3S2. Yes. 3P6. Yes. 3D10S1. Sorry? 3D10 then S1 at the end. 3D10S1. No, 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 no. <laughs> sir, can I try? Okay, sir. Uh, I have the Let me the one, sir. Yeah. It's 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S1, and 3D10. No. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. That is wrong, dude. That is wrong. Okay, guys. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go to. Okay, let's go to the one for Agon. Okay, Agon. Okay, Agon. Agon is simple, guys. 
one S two. Yes. Two S two. Yes. Two P six. Yes. Three S two. Three S two. Yes. Three P six. Yeah, three P six. So that one is simple. So actually, when writing the electronic configuration for copper. Is the part where you put the argon in the brackets and then you add the rest. I'm sure you guys know that, right? Yes, two, three, D, yes, nine. Yes, sir. The short hand for, sir, what did you say? We can say magnesium 3P6. Uh, yeah, yeah magnesium. So, like, there are different ways of writing electronic configuration. So, for example, you know, argon has got 18, copper has got 29. So, there's a way that you can actually write the whole copper. Instead of writing all those electrons, you can simply simplify it by counting where argon ends. And then in that bracket, you put argon, and then you only add the only remaining electrons. Okay, at the let end. me try. I've figured it out now. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Not, no more, no more, no more. We have refused. We have closed. <laughs> ah, well, sir, let him try. We want yes, to know that. Ah, no, 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 please try in my <laughs> inbox. So let's proceed. Okay, let's right, proceed, okay. guys. So, so mm. that's basically atomic structure as well as the electronic configuration that we just covered. So the atomic structure, know how an atom is, know what's in the nucleus, know what's around the nucleus, which are the electrons, know how the electrons are arranged, know how many electrons can be accommodated in each energy level. And also on top of the energy levels, know how many sub-levels are in each of the energy levels uh, and how many orbitals. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, what can you say about the orbitals um, in association with the energy? Sorry? What can you say about the orbitals in association with the energy? Yeah, so when you talk about uh, the orbitals, so we said the orbitals are found in the energy levels, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, and we said the energy levels increase as you move away from the nucleus, right? Yes. So the same thing can also apply. The orbitals, as you go away from the nucleus, the energy that's within the orbitals also increases as you move away from the nucleus. Also, like when, uh, the, the, the further that you are from the, I mean, the nucleus. further that the electrons are from the, from the nucleus, the more, the more energy, energy they have. Yes, very true. OK. All right. Yeah, so <laughs> electronic electronic configurations are very easy. So just know the two exceptions, copper and chromium. Make sure you memorize those. Make sure you also memorize how I threw the arrows and how I was filling them in. That can also come in uh, very important, especially for practice. And as you are beginning to learn about how to write electronic configurations. So that's OK, right? All right, okay. so I don't uh, know. Is there, I have is a question, there a way that I could... All right, yes, go ahead. I have, yeah, you when you are writing the the, the configuration for for Claudine, you don't yes. use the, the, the Pauline exclusion principle, and there are yes. about three rules. So I don't know which one is. Uh, should we be using all of them? We've got a for Pau principle and the hands rule. <laughs> So which one is, uh, should we be using all of them or is just use one loop? No, okay, for now, okay, the thing is that what matters is as long as you get the correct electronic configuration and already the Pauli ex ex exclusion principle, you can see that it's already enough for you to actually come up with the electronic configuration. So as long as you know to say each of the orbitals should have a maximum number of two electrons and those two electrons, they will be spinning in different directions. I think for me, that's, that's enough. Like, don't fill yourself with a lot of information. Sir, isn't yes. the, the, the hands rule yes. used when... Uh, uh, hello. Sorry. Yes, hello. Go ahead. Yes. I was saying the hands rule, isn't it used when you are... Uh, when we want to use the valence electrons instead of using a, all the, like all the number, the, the entire number of an electron. I mean, what am I saying? What are you saying? 
Uh, so I can ask a question. Do you guys have Sorry, some slides um, on, on this? You've got some slides, hand, right? The hands, you, uh, when we want to use the valence electron. Yes? Yes. Like, um, instead of using, the, uh, that is when we want to use the outermost principle quantum levels of an yeah, atom. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Instead of using even the core electrons, you just use the the ones that are outside. Yes, yeah, we just use... Yeah, that's when you use the hand rule. So you need to just become familiar with these rules. The hand rule, mm -hmm. the alpha bar principle, as well as the power ex exclusion principle. But the, uh, one thing I will ask you mostly is the electronic configurations. So as long as you're able to write the electronic mm -hmm. configurations, that mostly is, is enough for now. So do you guys have slides on these topics, atomic structure, as well as electronic configurations? No, sir. Yes, we no. do. You don't have okay. No, oh. don't have. Give us. All right, Give then us. I'll send. Okay, I'll, I'll send these slides. Thank you, Mister Kasemba. No, my name is Kasengi. You guys have been pronouncing my name wrongly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mister right, Kasenga. So, uh, yeah, so you guys go and revise. So let's now uh, briefly discuss bonding. So we can give it a bit of an introduction, depending on how far time will take us. Let's have five minutes. How many minutes? Are, what's, what's the time now? Let's have four minutes now. This um, is 1856. 1856. Yeah, too bad. All right, so what is chemical bonding? Let's just run through a bit so that you guys can go and revise. What's chemical bonding? This is a process by which forces are formed between different or identical atoms to make them function as a unit. Wow, wow, that's that's a lovely, lovely. Who was that? Who was that? It was me, sir. Ah, you guys. Can you please repeat that again, eh? I repeat, okay, repeat that, that again. Said, kindly repeat, kindly repeat. This is a process by which forces are formed between different or identical atoms and make them function as a unit. And make them function as a unit. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> simpler terms, chemical bonding is where you've got two atoms, and these two atoms uh, become attracted to each other. And when they become attracted to each other, they form a compound. So different atoms become attracted to each other, they bond, they form a compound. Of course, these are being attracted by the forces that you talked about. So there are forces that bring these two atoms together and then they form a compound. So what are the types of chemical bonds that we know of? Ionic bonds, covalent bonds. Yes. Mm -hmm. You guys, you guys. Okay, so there are two, basically there are two types of uh, bonds. So there are covalent bonds and there are non-covalent bonds. So who can tell me now the examples of non-covalent bonds? There should be about four types of non-covalent bonds. Let's mention them. The non-covalent bonds. Hydrogen bonds. Ionic yes, bonds. bonds. Ionic bonds, correct? Banda was... <laughs> Yeah, Van der Waals interactions. Waals what bosses. else? Hydrophobic. Uh, yeah, hydrophobic interactions. So those are the four types of non-covalent bonds. The ionic bonds, hydrogen bonds, the Van der Waals interactions, as well as the hydrophobic interactions. Okay. So covalent bonds, so take home message, the covalent bonds, they involve sharing of electrons, while ionic bonds involve transfer of electrons. So I'm sure probably in the next lecture, we'll come and uh, draw a few uh, types of bond or three types of bonds, the covalent bonds, as well as the ionic bonds. Yeah, so I don't know, is time up already? Yes, Wait, Mr. Kasenge, before you go. Yes. I've got a question uh, concerning this part uh, where we're talking about energy levels, sub-levels, and then orbitals. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes. By the way, uh, you said that the first energy level has one set of orbitals that contains two electrons, right? 
so I said the first energy level has got one sub-level, and within that sub-level, there is one orbital which has two electrons, right? You got that? Yes. Then yes. for the second one? Yes. For the second one, you said so, that... Uh, so the second are... energy level has got two sub-levels, which uh -huh. are S and P. Yes. And how many yes. orbitals does it have? So the uh, the second sub level has got three orbitals. Uh, so I said I, I said uh, I said the orbitals they go different. they go according to the odd numbers. Yes. Now I, I I've got a clarification on that. Yes. Um, yes. If you say that there are three orbitals in the second uh, energy level, and you say yes. that there are three electrons in each energy in each uh, orbital, it's going to yes. be related electrons in the second uh, sub-level, but initially... It's going to give, you, going to give you how many electrons? Six. Yes, six, because each of those orbitals has got two uh, electrons, yes? Aha, uh -huh. but initially they're supposed to be eight. For the, for where? For n is equal to two. For n is equal to two. Okay, the, the, yes. the, the, the eight is the total number of electrons, including the ones that are, because you know that if we say there are eight electrons, you know the two are going to be in the first energy level, and yes. then the others are now going to be in the second energy level. So the, the, that one is a total number. The eight is a total number. Okay. You've got it right. So after we calculate the n, we say n is equal to eight. So the first uh -huh. two are going to be in the first energy level, and then the other six are going to be in the second energy level in each of those orbitals. In the energy levels or in the sub levels? So the sub levels, so the sub levels are the ones that have got the orbitals, right? So yes. each, each of these sub levels has got a different number of orbitals. Yes. So I said the S sub level has got one orbital, the P sub level has got three orbitals, the D has got five, and that has got seven. You've got you got that part, right? Yes, that's that's the way I wanted to clarify. <laughs> that the first energy level has one orbital, the second has three orbitals, the third has five, and the fourth having seven. Uh, yes, yes. Because if I come and look at this, and I'm like, each orbital has two electrons, but here you're telling me that uh, the fourth energy level has seven orbitals, which is supposed to give me like 17 electrons. Uh, like, this is just me revising, and then I'm, I'm like, okay, so how Yes, yes. Yes, go ahead. What he has gone, he's cut. Uh, sorry, sir. Yes, I'm saying go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 I, I, I'm done, I'm done. I was just clarifying. Oh, you're just clarifying. Oh, all right, okay. Yes. What's the all right. point? So basically, I think he was just trying to revise what we had talked about and getting clarity on the sub-levels and the orbitals and how many electrons are in each of those orbitals. Yeah, so... <laughs> Sir, if you I still need the credit on... I need the credit yeah. on the difference between an orbital and the shell. I, I get it Sorry. difficult to differentiate these two. I mean, the, the main difference between a shell and, and an orbital. A shell and an orbital. So, a shell is the same as an energy level. Take it like that. Sir, uh, Sir, just to give an, an example, should an I, is where should I, uh, an, egg, in the, an electron is most likely to be found 90% of its time. Yes, in yes, 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 yes. Yeah, no, just no, to give asking... a practical, yes, yes sir, okay. just to give Go a ahead. practical example. Yes. Uh, should I take it like... Uh, those hostels, like the hostels that in school, those hostels. Yes, the yes. The whole hostel is an atom. Yes, then yes. We've got rooms there inside. Yes, we've got rooms there inside. I take those rooms as the orbitals. Orbitals. Yeah. Then I take those passages where we used to pass through as shells. Uh, the passage, wow. Well, is, 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 is that... I, I mean, the, we have got the hostel. Now, the hostel is an atom. 
Then yes, you've yes. got rooms, then rooms are orbitals. <coughs> yes. Then you've got passages there where we, we pass through. Then those passages now, since us, we are electrons, then the passages we call them yes. as shells. Yeah, is, you could that, you use that. The, is that the correct way? Or... Okay. Yeah, I think it it, okay. it is a, it is it is the correct way. Yes, think of it like that. It will be easier for you to to understand. Like the like the yeah. passages that you're just passing oh, yeah. through them, but ninety percent of the time you're in your room. Yes, ninety percent of the time you're in the room, which are exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm. Which are orbitals? Then yes, the whole host the, being orbitals. an atom. Yes, so and us students being electrons. Yes, us being electrons. Yeah, so that's then a very, very good illustration. Yes, that's a very, very good illustration. Yeah, so it's time up. In case you guys have got any private questions, maybe you could. I'll send the number to who's the classroom. I am. Uh, it's me. Who is this? Who is this? Uh, such a lie we don't have uh, it's oh, me. oh you don't have oh okay <laughs> there was someone who invoked me asking for my number so i'm sure I'll, I'll send that. my i'll send my oh, number to him then if you guys have got any question with... i'll communicate with him to... yeah all right, all, right, <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right guys thank you very much for attending the lecture apologies for the bad camera as well as the bad network i'm sure next time we'll do better yeah, All right, right. Yeah, Enjoy your evening, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thanks, Sam. Sam, the your neighbor. Your neighbor. Yeah, sir. Like for a number, I think it would be if you just like you send your number. Let's say you you just give us your number. Otherwise, you may have personal issues or with you. We may, we may not be able to... Yes, sir. That's, that's what... That's like what that's anyone, I remember if your message you wanted to send. Oh, oh, right. Right. Okay. That's right. Go on to your number. Okay, let me, let, me, let me type my number in the messages. Number... <laughs> <laughs> so can you just post it in the group? Uh, I'm, I don't think I'm not even in the WhatsApp group actually. So, but I think I've, I've sent it on the messages. I think it should zero, appear. Zero nine seven what? Nine seven I've, I've sent it in the messages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> yeah. Call it down. You can't do text messages. But I've sent them on it's the message. Seven four zero one seven zero four eight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right, guys. Uh, Enjoy your evening. Zero nine seven. Oh, listen. Zero nine seven four. Uh huh. Zero one seven zero four eight. Zero nine seven four. Uh -huh. Sir, my number ends with forty eight as well. All right, guys. Enjoy your evening. Bye. Uh, I love you. All right. <laughs>